the next thing is starting the game is to organize for some morale that's a simple dice roll against a table in the book so and i don't need to explain how to roll a dice to you i don't need to explain how to look things up but suffice to say your force rating varies between eight and the worst case to 11 for the most part um elite troops get modifiers pluses to this roll green troops get minuses so green troops are more likely to be less motivated elite troops more likely to be more motivated so that being said we move on to a very unique aspect of this game called the patrol phase in the patrol phase it represents your scouts going ahead finding out where the enemy is knowledge of the area and general field craft so for example you may move up to the trees then you notice the enemy are there so when you report back you know that once you clear that tree line you will be in sight of the enemy so your men effectively can deploy up to where it's safe so instead of having your standard war game over i deploy in this table edge you deploy in this table edge it's done slightly different so for for that to work we got the game uses um something called a jump off point uh most games have three jump off points each and these are effectively deployment points that you get through patrolling and scouting we'll show you an example of how that happens now so your men can deploy from the jump off points so obviously you imagine sort of the the, the scouts have reported and said you can carry and go in but once you clear the tree on over there on, on the hill the enemy can see you so keep your head down after that so moving up to the tree is done out of sight of the enemy and you know it's safe so your men can in that way you can sort of try to outflank the enemy etc tanks and vehicles can't do that they would deploy from a road you can't sneak up on somebody with a conix tiger you'll they'll hear you come in so this is just basically about your infantry platoon your infantry teams field guns that sort of thing that you you could get into position sort of with a degree of stealth so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at how the patrol markers will move in the game and then how you deploy from the patrol markers and then we'll do an example patrol phase for you to see what it's like so now we're going to represent a bit of the patrol phase you can imagine it's been going on for a while so we're going to look at these two german markers oh by the way i forgot to mention you need a tape measure but if if you're watching a war gaming video on youtube you've probably got at least one of these spare lurking around your house probably lurking would be a good word because you can never find them when you need them so we're going to look at just these two patrol markers for the germans and two patrol markers for the allies so we'll start with the allies to have a turn of movement i need to move my light out of the way because i didn't think this was when i put it there so patrol markers can move 12 inches so i'm moving this one just down here just off camera okay they can move 12 inches they ignore terrain when they move the main caveat is they have to remain within 12 inches of sort of coherency as it were of another one because you don't send patrols all out everywhere you need some form of chain of communication so they can they, they, they can communicate their results to them. So they have to stay within 12 inches of another marker. So if you imagine you have four, you have them sort of spread out 12 inches apart. Now, the other caveat is when they get within 12 inches of an enemy marker, both markers are locked down. So this marker is going to move up. And once it gets here, it's locked down and it locks down the German marker because they're 12 inches apart. So now that German marker can't move. When all the markers are locked down, then the patrol phase ends. So it's now the Germans turn to move. So they know if they go beyond this point, it'll be locked down. So they're gonna move up over here. They're maintaining 12 inches. Now, because these affect where you deploy, the Americans, the, the Allies are thinking, oh, well, actually, we want to stop them getting this building. So they're going to move up towards here. And the moment they get within 12 inches, they're both locked down. So if there was 
if that was all that was left in the patrol phase, that would be that would be it. That would be end of patrol phase. But what does this achieve? Well, that comes from these, the jump off points that get deployed. Now, the way jump off points work, usually you've got four patrol markers and only three jump off points. So the way you just deploy a jump off point and it's quite handy to have two sticks or two tape measures for this. Is you pick one of your jump off points. We'll pick this one because it's better on camera. And you look where the nearest two enemy patrol markers are. So that's roughly there. Okay. So you form a nice little X. And this gives you a triangle here. Now you can deploy anywhere in this triangle with your jump off point that's more than six inches away from the patrol marker. Because obviously the patrol marker represents the point that they engage and see the enemy. So it's not safe to move to that point because you saw the enemy there. It is, however, safe to move to like 20 yards behind that point and behind a hedge. So that's the other key point. It's going to be six inches back and in cover. So six inches back would ideally, we'd be able to plonk it in this building that annoyingly is just off camera. If I turn the camera a little bit, there we go. Should have checked that I'd zoomed in correctly before I started this. So that deploys there. Now the, Germans, if we did the same logic to this one, that allows them to deploy nicely behind the fence there. This one becomes more problematic in that, if I move the building out of the way so you can see, there's not really much cover. So they may clip the end of the hill to deploy there. If there's no cover six, inch, six inches or more behind the point, you go to the table edge. So they'd go to the table edge, which is just running along there, and they'd have a jump off point on the table edge. So that's roughly how, how this works. And obviously you do that to place all three jump off points. Some scenarios will be different. Some scenarios will affect where you put your patrol markers and so on and so forth. But that's dependent on the scenario and the campaign. Like British, for example, have a rule that if they're defending a town, they can place an extra jump off point in one of the buildings as their as their command post. So that's that's the crux of it. So we'll go through an example of it now so you get to see it played out. Imagine two forces meet in as they're patrolling. So you've got four patrol markers there and four patrol markers there. Germans and allies. So for this, we'll imagine it's coming up to it's coming to up, up to a you know a couple of weeks now after D Day. So the force morale for the Allies is quite high. Force morale for the Germans, their conscripts, maybe um, some reserve battal reserve divisions, not not as high. So we're going to give the higher force morale. We're not going to roll it. We're going to say that the the Allies have got 10 and the Germans have got 9. Okay. Doesn't make much difference what the numbers are at this point. It does, however, mean that the Americans go first. In a lot of scenarios as well, it depends on who the attacker or the defender is. Because this is after D-Day, we'll assume that the Americans are coming through and attacking. Um, I know it's not very Normandy as a board. Imagine it being like, somewhere in Italy or something, because, um, well, my Normandy scenery is up in the attic and and I don't feel like getting it today. Um, and this is all out anyway for our current campaign we're running, so it was easier. So I've rolled the dice because the attacker usually, in most scenarios, gets extra movement. So let's say in this one he gets D3, so he gets to move two, because that's three, so that's two. 
moves before anybody else. So what we're going to do is we're going to just chuck two forward 12 inches. Now because Americans had the highest force morale, they get another move. So they're going to move one up. Notice I've not tried to move them forward because that will end up being a giant pain in the neck because I still need to maintain some form of coherency. So the Germans are going to do the same thing. They can move forward. Oh, sneaky cheat in there. Took two. So the Americans are going to move up. So now they've got a nice base to deploy from. Germans need to press forward a bit more in this, so they're gonna they're gonna hurry up and try to go forward. Whereas the Americans want they they're in the town anyway; they got the better position, so they're gonna try. So this one's gonna maintain within twelve of that. They're gonna try to maintain this. They don't really need to push forward too much. So the Germans, as I say, up have to push forward a bit a bit more. So I'm going to do a couple more moves with them now and I'll record again when something interesting happens. Okay, so after a few moves, we've gotten to the position where they're almost locking each other down. The Americans have kept a broad front moving up. So it's now the Germans' turn. If they move forward, they're going to lock. So... They're not going to be able to get into this building because they'll have to go six inches back. But they don't want the Americans to be in that building. Because if the Americans get a jump off point to here and get into the building somehow, then they're going to massive field to fight. This building, they're not going to be able to stop. But that build, that build this building blocks line of sight, so they got some form of cover. So this marker is going to do something sneaky and it's going to move until... It's within 12 of both these. Now, what that's achieved is it's locked these two down. So the gym player knows it doesn't have to worry about fire bases being set up in these buildings. Now, the Americans don't want the Germans to try and push, but they're a bit blocked for going to stop this one. So what they're going to do now is they're going to move up and stop this one from moving forward so that's going to lock this one and lock that one so now the germans are in a predicament because they, they they kind of like some forward deployment but they've got down here so they can move up to here and, and stay 12 inches out, out of it so they're not locked yet and they're within 12 of that one there so they're aiming to try and get this build in here. In fact, they may as well move the 12, get blocked, because then they've got this build in to deploy, which gives them a nice point. Now, the Americans are going to move up and lock their last one down over here somewhere, because they know now that they, they've got nice deployment, and when they're all locked down, that's the end of the the jump off the patrol phase so now we have to deploy our jump off points so we'll start with the germans they're going to go for the obvious one if you draw a line back from that and that it gives you this building so they're going to put a deployment point here towards this side you can deploy six inches from it so that allows them to deploy along this hedge if they need be deploy forward in the shadow of this building so they can advance or deploy here to make a fire base cover in that flank so that's a nice sensible one for them americans are also going to use their first one for the obvious so we use that one so we turn it over so we know it's been used they're going to go for this one which those two are the nearest but it allows us to go here which is what they wanted because that gives them a sort of a backstop and sets a nice fight would set a nice fire base up for them now the 
Germans are a bit flummoxed with this one because they were hoping to deploy somewhere here, but because of the angles, they can't from that one because that one shot out to the wing. This one, however, allows them to deploy in that corner there, which is where they're going to go next. So they've got a nice, a nice forward deploy place in some cover there. America, so that was this one. Americans hopefully want to counter that. So they've gone via this one, which when we put them in, allows them to deploy nicely up behind those trees. So that's the last American jump off point is in covering amongst these trees here. And that was this one used. That wasn't the next one, it was the second one. I can't count. So Germans, that one is going to be off the board there. That one is at least going to be on the field here. So they haven't got, they've got very limited choice, I think, as to what they can do. So they're going to use this one and put their last one here. So they at least have something if the Americans start pressing forward too much and overrun. The Americans were thinking of using this one to deploy on the table edge here. But because the Germans have got that there, that would be a very, very bad place to go. So they're probably thinking of going onto the table edge here so they could deploy in the definitely to that. So that's their last one. They'll use this point, which goes across there, and then put it. So as long as it's that side of that light, as long as it's between there and that one so they've gone up here on the table edge there so that allows them some flanking across there they haven't got much in the line of cover over on this side but if they for example look looking at those support options maybe if they had an entrenchment or something that would be a nice place to deploy machine gun that's entrenched and that would give very nice fields of fire covering the board. So that's that's the patrol phase. Now it's ended, we pick up all the points, leave the jump off points on, and then we can get on with the game. Catch you in the next video.